So the first part of this move is something that you see in old self-defense curriculums, whether it be Japanese jiu-jitsu, um, you see it in one of the Brazilian jiu-jitsu self-defense movements. You also, if I remember correctly, see it as a move in one of the Marine uh, MAPS martial arts curriculum. And that's basically where if someone's from like standing behind you and your legs are staggered, so you have leg A, leg B, leg A, leg B, um, you basically just sort of project your butt and hip back at them, bend down and grab their foot. What's different about the finish here, though, is instead of being a straight knee bar, Dick Shikot angles his body so that he can turn it into a knee ripper with rotational force versus a knee bar with hyperextension of the knee. Um, we don't, modern grapplers don't do a lot of these rotational knee rippers except in the form of heel hooks and to a lesser extent in toe holds. But in catch wrestling, they did them all the time. And I still actually do some of these, and they're brutal. Um, although I will say that the Eddie Bravo vaporizer leg lock that he used on Hoyler Gracie in the rematch, that is an example of kind of an ancestor of some of these. But <clears throat> part of the whole reason that people went for some of these specifically in these matches is, again, it was meant as a punishment hold, and their opponent would voluntarily go belly down to defend pins but the manipulation of the knee and the leg was intended to get them to undo that voluntary belly down, meaning to say, no, don't go belly down. I'm going to put you in pain so that you go belly up again and voluntarily pin yourself. So if I rotate your knee this way and threaten to break it, you're going to be encouraged to go from belly down to belly up. And the fact that they wore shoes in these matches made a very different set of leverage. That's why you see a lot of the quote unquote toe hold, what they called toe holds, um, manipulation with just both hands on the actual surface area of the shoe, like on the on the laces area and on the like rubber tips where the toes would be, because the grip is so much better on actual shoes than it is on just sweaty toes or or like, you know, someone's foot without a sock or something like that. So the leverage is very different and if you ever play around in wrestling shoes and try any of these moves, you can tell that there's a very different leverage all of a sudden, like it changes things. So that's just a few of the reasons why these locks are different than some of the stuff we would see in the modern day, even though like you can totally rip someone's knee right out of um, alignment and destroy their connective tissues and make them have to have surgery by doing these rotational knee locks. They're brutal. They still work. Um, but one of the only complaints about them is that people would still have mobility to move their body around to get out of the hold. But that's exactly what the catch wrestlers wanted. They wanted the people to voluntarily go away from the pain because they were trying to get a pin. Um, and we can still make use of that when we want. It's just most of our matches, unless we're doing a catch as catch can rule set, most of the matches weren't, are not going to be necessarily like one on the basis of a pin and that's one of the reasons why you don't see these anymore even though you can still totally turn them into um, finishable submissions or like make them at, at least at the as the beginning of a chain of submissions so they're still totally functional they, they're still out there for people to play with it's just people will usually go right for a heel hook nowadays or you know maybe a knee bar maybe a toe hold maybe a straight ankle lock but I still think people can very profitably put, play around with this stuff if they invest the time in it. It's just most people won't invest the time if they see such a high probability finish in something like a heel hook. But that doesn't mean that no one should experiment with this. It's, it's just to give you the context as to why we don't necessarily see these as often.